Hi there. So what I'm going to do today is a pattern that I haven't actually tied for well over two years. I only tied one of them, so it's going to be quite a bit of uh, photo referencing uh, to see to get this matched up again. So about two years ago, I got sent a photograph from a friend of mine and he said, oh, I bet you can't tie this pattern. Um, it was of a lure uh, called the, the Fire Tiger. And quite like the colour combinations and the bars and everything on there. So I thought, yeah, I'll give that a go. And tied this fly and it pretty much was nail on the head with uh, what the lure was. And over the last two years, it saw quite a lot of action, you know, the pike definitely coming up and smashing it. And yeah, so I was absolutely gutted when just um, last week I lost the fly to the, the river gods. So um, obviously I need to tie myself another one. Some of the stuff that I used originally, um, particularly flash wise, I don't stock in my shop, but I can tell you where you got it and get it from. So obviously the first thing obviously is thread. Now I use 100D uh, gel spun silk. Uh, obviously it comes in a bulk spool normally and then you have to re-spool it down. For the flash um, I am using the hollow gold um, and it is in the shop. What isn't in the shop is the lateral scale stuff now you can get this from a couple of places in the uk as well as big streamers in the netherlands now one that you'd probably need to find a good alternative for is this now i struggle to find a really vibrant orange flash and a lot of the stuff that i've bought or seen online claiming to be orange is more like a peachy you know um wishy-washy type stuff um, so when I came across this when I was visiting back in Kenya I literally grabbed all the bags off the shelf and um, yeah so this stuff they called it string deco and it only cost me a hundred bob which is not even a pound something and my sister looked at me like I was a weirdo um, but she since has realised what I use this stuff for. So it's an orange flat um, flash is what this is. There's no crinkle to this at all. Now what is in the shop is obviously the bulk of the material. Now by now I think most of you have probably figured out that I use a very particular type of material for my, for my tying. So for the top of this lure has a black streak down the back of it. So that is going to be the Tiger Hair Black. It then has a green upper back. So I've got the green Tiger Hair. It's got a layer of yellow uh, towards the, the belly. So I've got my normal yellow. But in this version, I'm also going to have a look and see by blending a bit of the fluoro yellow into it. So I'm going to brighten that yellow section a little bit more as well. And then the belly of the fly we've got the orange Tigo as well. The, on the head section, I know I use alpaca wool for all my, my flies. Um, I find that you can use quite a bit of the wool and it doesn't trap air like the same amount would do with the, the normal pred wools. So obviously the top of the fly is going to be the black with the belly being the orange there as well. The other thing I'm going to change around a little bit as well in the eyes. So I know originally, about two years ago, I was still using 10mm uh, uh, eyes for all my, my pipe flies. So since then I've actually gone for bigger eyes. And so originally this was tied with the 10mm wind. Um, so this time I'm actually going to go with the 13mm gold. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Hook size. I know I've been tying with Partridge or Redditch uh, Universal Predator X's for quite a long time and the hook I've actually got on the vise at the minute is a 4-0 whereas this is actually threes but I've got 4-0s in stock as well. The other two things which I'm going to be adding to this and if I don't like the look of it obviously I'm going to take it off and redo it. Now these aren't in the shop but 
Um, I might be adding them to the shop just to see how they get on. Obviously, I've got a yellow ice dub and a green ice dub. So I'm going to put that, add those into them as well. So let's get started and see what we come up with. Hopefully, something that is almost the same as what I had before. Um, now, I know I get told off quite often, oh, you should at least tie three of everything that you use. Yes, I should do, but you know what? When it comes to pipe fries and it takes quite a bit of time to tie one of them, um, I tend to just tie one. I do tend, because everyone takes quite a bit of photographs of their flies when they tie, so I've always got my photos to refer back to when I do want to retie something. So, um, yeah, and this is obviously uh, no exception to that. Right. So I'm going to start off there with just putting a layer of thread down. And then get your pike proofing on now. Uh, got to protect everything from the teeth. Right, so flash. So I've got the lateral scale and the hollow stuff coming up first. Always have a brush, they're really handy things. As I've always said, don't be skimpy on the flash, particularly when it comes to these things. Yep. And this is obviously going to get folded in half, so I'm just... Uh, what I'm going to be doing is tapering those ends so it makes it look a little bit more natural even though the fire tiger is a very unnatural looking thing. So I've got about half that. So I have got a fair bit coming up the shank but um, I'm not too worried about that right now. The thing I'm going to do is roll that flash around the shank equally and then I'm going to cut that excess off because I just don't need it. Let's tidy those ends up a little bit and then, right that is yellow done with. So now I've obviously got the, the lateral scale now in my hand and looking at the back end of my photo I can see a few strands of this. So it's like about four. The thing I like about lateral scale is it is nice wide flash and it's got that crinkle to it as well which it gives it like its name that really nice sort of scaly look. So actually I'm going to go with five pieces of lateral scale. Again, taper the ends. It's a bit easier to use with this because there's only a bit, five bits of it. What I'm going to do is match the same sort of length to what I've already got on there. And just roll lateral scale around the hook as well. When it wants to play ball. As I mentioned, it's been a while since I've done this, so there we go, that's better. Now 
And again, just uh, snip off the excess on that one. Don't forget to do that pipe proofing. And obviously start moving that thread up to about about there. So we've got what's that? Just under an inch left to the hook eye. So looking at the photos, I started with a layer of yellow. So. As I mentioned, I'm going to blend a bit more of this. I'm just sort of looking at the lure photo now. And I'm actually pondering about it, just using the fluoro on this. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to blend it. <laughs> Shows you a bit of blending as well. Obviously, with so the fluoro stuff compared to the normal tiger hair, as you can see, there is a huge difference in length. So obviously, I need to shorten what I use out of the fluoro. Going back to my original tie photo. And then about that much blending in, I think. Right. And obviously, I need to match the length to the original stuff. then get blending. So part of the blending process is actually going to taper this quite nicely for me as well. So all I'm going to do is grab a bit of pinch out the bottom and then bring it back on top of the previous lot and just keep doing that. And each time you take a pinch you're taking a bit of the original yellow and a bit of the fluoro yellow. And you just keep blending until that's all nicely mixed and you don't have streaks of colour left so, and you see I've already by doing that it, it gives me a nice taper on the ends there so let's have a quick look at what length we're looking at so obviously I want this fly a bit longer in the body so just by pulling and stretching that out there that will give me a bit more length that fly. So it's about, about that. Brilliant. So this one I'm going to roll it around the, sh the hook shank on here. Just put a few wraps down. Just make sure that that is going round everything. Holding that there. Sort of separating it all into a nice round bit and then just push that back over onto itself and then just pulling those threads backwards. There we go, just got that bit there. And then just bring that thread forward and just build a little dam up just in front of that yellow there. 
Right. So I'm not going to do is bring that thread too far forward. Right, so... Just looking at another photo here of like a full daylight photo. Also a year on, so this has been chewed up quite a few times by this point. Um, got what looks like a layer of yellow and green blend next so got like that so what I'm going to do on this one is instead of use the the standard yellow I'm actually going to use the fluoro yellow into green on this one So, grab my green. So, with Tigo hair, you don't need a huge amount. So, you know, just make sure that when I roll it, I sort of check to see the sort of thickness of that, you know. Um, because obviously, when you comb this out, it's just really going to bush up. So, you don't want loads on there. So a, bit, a bit less, because obviously, I'm adding the, the other to it as well. A lot more green than yellow on this one. I remember when I first tied this particular pattern, it did take me a little while. So I was mixing, blending, and then um, chasing other little colours in there as well. So I'm not going to use too much of this fluoro in here. And the other thing that we're going to add to this is that ice dub. Now, the good thing I like about this ice dub is it's a nice long ice dub. But it also gets everywhere. So what I want to do first of all is blend the green first. And then add the ice dub to it. So again, let's get blending on this one. The other thing, if you want to, if you find you've got ends that are a bit too long, what you can do is straighten them up. And when you bring up your next batch there, just pull from the bottom that's loose and then just line it, realign it back up for yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so that's nicely blended there. Right, first of the ice dubs. I'm going to want a nice healthy pinch of this, but I also want the longest bits at the top. So, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to be placing it almost in the middle of the tie. Then, so just checking the lengths. Yep. So what I'm going to do is turn that over. Now, move that forward just a little bit. Right, let's put that on there. So one of the things I'm doing with this one is I'm keeping this particular tie up the top because I don't want it mixing too much with the bottom because this is where I'm going to start blending in the orange and yellow section of it. Let's get rid of that ice stub.
again I'm going to use the fluoro and orange so whereas what I call a lot of my ties are the body's mainly done in three sections this one is going to be a bit more than that so obviously I need to keep that in mind when I'm using the amount of material that I am so we've got a tiny bit of orange and there'll be a tiny bit of the yellow going in this is that fluoro stuff so just a little wisp of that now believe it or not that is all done now I don't need that anymore so I'm just shortening that length to match the tea goat, the normal stuff as I call it and get blending there we go, that's nicely sort of blended in there now the Kenya flash now, it's a bit of a mess, this stuff, because um, <laughs> I got it really into a mess when I started trying to get it organised. So literally, just from the bottom, grab a pinch. Like so what I'm looking for is just a subtle amount of flash with this. Now, I need to actually line up these ends um, because they're a bit too all over the place for me. And then obviously I'm going to layer them after that. And the other thing is because it's quite long, I don't need all of that. So I'm just having a quick measure. Yeah, so about half is what I do need. So what I'm going to do is halve it and then um, cut it. First things first. Just pull those up a bit. And then re-taper up those ends. Because I've cut it from that end, that's where I'm going to start tapering it from. There we go. So add that flash into that orange, the blended orange there. And then what I'm going to do is blend the flash in to what I've just done as well. Now this goes the whole length of the, the belly of this particular lure, so I need to make this a bit longer. And just simply by pulling the ends, stretches it a little bit. Now there is a limit on how much you can stretch this until it just won't work. So with this layer, I'm putting it underneath the fly. So what I tend to do is put a 50-50 each side of the hook and then bring it up. And just sort of check where underneath that is coming to. And I want that coming to just the end of that yellow there. So for me that is perfectly placed. And just put a couple of wraps in. So what you should be seeing is the green, the yellow and the orange. And what I'm going to do now is sort of bring the green down about ways and then the orange round that way. Right. Let's give that just a little pull. And just grabbing the green parts there to 
pulling that back and just giving it a little twist back onto itself and out just to hold it there and with the orange I'm going to split that and then put half each side of the hook and then down and round the back so I'll pull that green back over the top some of the flash might not do as, you're, as it's told so I'm just going to pull that thread forward and just put a couple of wraps down just in front of it just to keep it all in place now what I'm going to do now is using my brush normally I wait to the end of a tie before I brush but because I want to make sure that the blending is going exactly how I want it to I need to brush it now so a little bit of a bad hair day going on here also get rid of any of the little loose bits which is good and then let me just pull that back down there top green and solid orange so we're doing no I'm not going to use as much as I have done in the past with this because obviously I need to keep some of these layers light but there we go we've got another thing of green taper the ends and then just pull that down through into there. Now I need to stretch this because this needs to be pretty much the full length going back down here. Just roll that halfway round each way. And same again with the orange. Now with the orange, I'm not going to be putting another layer on there because it's only a certain amount of orange down the bottom. So I'll be about there. Tapering those ends up. And again, what you're doing is making sure that that is going all the way down the end there. So again, put 50-50 each side of that hook. And then up into that bit there. So this layer, I've decided not to put some flash into this. So just roll that around the hook. Because the flash from the other layer is actually still there and they're still coming through quite nicely. There we go. At some point my uh, nail varnish is going to run out and I need another pot. But I'm trying to get every little bit that I can. Just pull that back and roll it at the top for the time being. And the other one again, split and then pull down and round under the hook and then just bring yourself forward a little bit on the thread there what you don't want to be doing with this is putting thread over the actual material because what that does is it, it flattens out and ruins that really nice taper that you've got going on there so we I want that bulky round nose to it so the other thing I'm going to do again is give it another brush and what that does is it blends the materials in nicely for me there we go so it helps me make sure that everything is where it should be so green is done and we've got orange flash is done so black is the next one so looking at the lure 
and my original fly. There isn't that much black on top and I think originally what I did was actually use a permanent marker to put the back on instead of using the actual hair itself. But this time I'm going to use the hair itself. So there's only a small amount of black. So it's almost like the scruffy tiger. Just give it a little hint of black. Um, that's what you're looking for. And obviously with this stuff, don't forget that when you're using it, you're going to be folding over. So whatever you do pick out, you're going to be using double. Um, so you don't need loads to start with. So, yeah, that much is just all I need. That's the black done. So I taper those ends. Now this goes down the full length of the fly. So again, I'll need to make sure that I've got the right amount out here. And just by doing that, I'm just pulling and tapering it through. There you go, so I've got that down to the, the tail there. So with this, I only want it to sit right on top. So I'm not going to push it around the hook. I'm just going to keep it literally right at the top there. See, every time you've got to make sure that's protected. And just bring that back and fold it onto itself. And a couple of wraps at the front there. So almost getting to the end here. I'll give that just a little brush. To... Okay, it's right down the streak of the back there, which is what I want. Right, we're into the walls stage. We're almost at the end here. First one then is black, and then you've got the orange going on. Now, seeing as I already use this stuff and have been for many years, you've got to excuse the already open bags. Why do we use wool? It's used to help a fly swim in a certain way. So, you've got lures that as you finish that pull, they'll sit there and twist you know, almost 90 degrees, or as uh, the chap that sent me this particular photo with this challenge uh, two years ago, he said, handbrake turn, where it literally turns almost right back onto itself. What achieves that is the wool that you use on the heads of your flies. The wool acts as a drag through the water, and because there's no resistance at the back of the fly, what happens is that, start, that end starts to slow down, and this end is still going. So that is where it, it, the tail tries to overtake the head. So in the water, what that looking like is that nice kicking motion that you get at the end of that pull, boof. As soon as you pause, the tail starts to overtake the head and you get that side action. I know a lot of anglers will tell you that it's like a dinner bell for pike. As soon as they see that twisting action, they nail it. Um, it probably is true. Um, I mean, to be honest with me, the majority of the flies I use have tied, you know, they, they all see fish. Um, so, yeah. I mean, action-wise, I love the action myself. So I will carry on using what I'm using. So, to finish this fly off, I'm going to be using the black top and the orange belly. Which is in keeping with what is going on with this particular fly. So, with the head... I'm getting the alpaca wool here and what I'm doing is just slowly put my thumb down on it and just pulling it through and it is pulling a few fibres through and building up a layer on my hand and that is what I want. So top of the fly that is about what I want really. The rest of that just put aside. Now with this if you want to add ice dub into this this is perfect for that um, so you know you can 
add those in you can if it's a different type of pattern you can put any sort of color you want in there and it really does give it a nice little zing so what i want to do there is just pinch that into half i'm going to pull some of the fibers just a little bit longer just taper those ends a little bit more for myself and then that's going on a 50 50 top of that head and again i'm keeping it in line with that black back that's going down there And with this stuff, you just you just need one or two wraps just to keep it in place. There we are. Right, and the orange. Same again with the orange. Just give yourself a nice big pinch to start off with, and then start layering it in your hand. There. Again, I've built up a nice little amount there. I think I'll be about right. Now, with the underside of the hook, what you need to be careful of is that this doesn't foul the hookups. So what I'm actually going to do with this is shorten the amount that I've actually got here because I don't want a long amount. Okay. so I've got just about that much there so again just taper those ends a little bit there because I don't want it looking like I've just done that there we go give it a little bit of a roll get it together and then go under the chin of that there pull that forward a little bit and what you do is you're pinching that down so it's not moving itself around the eye the hook there because again i want to keep these separate i want the clear black top and the clear orange throat and into the belly there just pull that and what i use for this last bit is just a toothpick and what i do is i dip that onto the brush because if i put the brush in there it's going to coat too much of the fibers instead of just the bits i actually want doing so use that what I do is I pull that down and then just apply it just to those threads. There we are. And then just pull those backwards. And what I do here for the bottom piece is bring the thread towards myself and then pull that back and then just wind it on the front there. So don't need a lot of thread on the nose here just need to finish it off really okay okay right everyone loves their permanent marker so what i'm going to do here is because i've got I've been using white thread so i just want to hide that and all I do is just dab and hold the pen onto the threads and that will actually soak that up for me. Okay. Perfect. And then last but not least that final bit of protecting the threads there. So again just pull those back so you don't get it all over in the wrong place. Just a little dab and just under there there we go perfect let's have a quick look at what we got here so obviously this is without the bars and without the eyes at the minute but there you go that is the profile nice big wide that is pretty much a bulkhead right now so when i put these eyes on i need to keep them quite nice and out what I don't want to be doing is pinching that too much there and so that's going to be the next fun part and as you can see what I've done is we've got the black top we've got the green we've got the yellow and then the orange all the way down 
So yeah. And then in a few days time I'll go and see how this fish is and see if it's uh, any good to what it used to be. Right, let's get the eyes on this and then uh, get the bars on. So we're going to start with the eyes. I've got my 13mm eyes, I've got my glue and of course the fly. So looking at the fly, what I tend to do is put my hand straight down and sort of push down and spread everything out. So what I'm going to be doing is putting glue right here. What I also want to make sure is before I start that like here I don't want the wool blending with the, uh, the, the lower parts of this so I need to separate those back out. I've got a little bit of rogue orange in there. Oh, that's okay, do you know what, I'll get a permanent marker on that and fix that, so that's fine. Right, so we've got those split there. Let's turn that back over. So what I'm doing is working that glue into the fibres there. Placing that straight onto that. Turn that over and rinse and repeat on this side. And what I'm going to do is just check that those eyes are in the same place, which they're not quite. So I'll just bring that one forward a little bit. So although I said I didn't want to pinch these eyes before, what I am going to do is just keep them loosely put where I want. Just realign that a little bit. So what I'm doing is just looking to see where all that is lining up. So I'm quite happy with that right now. Right, so I'm just going to leave that as is to set. Right, so those eyes have now set to where I'm happy with them. I take that off. And right, let me just double check everything. So obviously where I've got a little bit of orange into the black here, permanent marker, hides a lot of sins this stuff does. And all I'm going to do is just hide that. There we go. Right, now the other thing I need to do, uh, which is really the last thing for this, is add the black bars onto this fly. Now... On my original fly, I had one, two, three, four bars. So what I tend to do is put my fingers out. So I've got one, two, three, four. So it gives a nice even spacing between things. And what I do is literally just put my hand down, and with your permanent marker, you're doing that. Now I'm coming only down to the orange part of this pattern. I'm thinking I might need a bigger marker pen. Let me just get there we are. Got the big boy out. Okay. Now I think with permanent marker is over time it does fade and whilst it gets chewed it gets faded. So every now and again you need to revisit those bars and pop them back on. So what I do is width wise I give it a fingers width and then put the next bar in.
And on the original flight pattern itself, it's actually got a darkened area here. So what I want to do there is just hold it all down. And this is why I've got cardboard down now. Is just to give it a little bit more black onto there. Right, so obviously I've got to turn that over. And follow the bars again. Now I can just about see where those bars are. So I'm going to press that down and then I've got to try and match up. There we are. So I know that I only came down to the orange on this one. And then that taily bit on this side as well. There we go. So what I've done is actually changed it from a round tip to a chisel tip there. Right, so one last brush through. to get everything put back into place and there we have it fire tiger 2.0 you can see that profile is still there I'll give that a brush just down that side there Okay, there we are. And then obviously we've got those lines. You can see you've got the, the blackness just popping down the, the back there subtly. And we've got the orange just going down the belly right to the tail there. So yeah. Now I'm happy with that and obviously the proof in the pudding is how it swims and casts and i will be seeing that in a couple of days time or the other side of christmas rather when we do the tinsel tosser event and um yeah see how we go and obviously see if anything's hungry enough to to go for it now size wise um this is a healthy <laughs> A healthy 10 inches if you include the flash on there. Hang on a minute. Let's put it on that side. However, if you don't call count the flash, then we are a nice sort of comfy six and a half, seven inches. Uh, the previous fly... <coughs> I think was around the six inch mark anyway, so it's, it's not far off it. 